Hi, this is Chris Fan again from the ECG Armory. Uh, today in this episode, we're going to be doing a little more finishing work on the abs section and the back butt plate. Uh, there's still some holes we got to drill um, for some uh, split rivets on the side here and on the bottom here where the uh, front cod piece connects to the back. And we're going to start sizing this up for where we're going to put the pieces for the um, strapping. And I think I'm going to do as uh, the end of this video, I'm going to start making some uh, snap plates and I'm going to give you a demonstration on how I do that. And then we're going to, uh, I'll do that as a speed up video as I have to do the rest of the snap plates and I'll explain what that whole procedure is going to look like. But let's get started on this. Uh, basically on the right side of the abdomen over here, uh, you have to put three split rivets. And basically they, they land in a very specific spot here. They're about 10 millimeters from the end. So I'm just going to quickly draw a line here just so I kind of get the line I'm going for here. So about 10 millimeters from the end and 10 millimeters from the bottom. So I'm just going to draw another line here. So we know our, our bottom one is going to be about there. And our top one is going to be about there. So now we just got to figure out where the middle one is. Uh, so let me just measure that. That's about 12 and a half, so six and a quarter. That's going to be approximately here. So these are three holes that are for split rivets to hold a strap. Now I'm not going to use the strip, the um, split rivets to hold the strap. I re prefer to have kind of elastic straps and do them with snap plates so that I can remove the abdomen. If you do this and permanently attach this with split rivets uh, with some non-stretchable fabric like this, uh, you get no stretch and you can't separate the abdomen from the butt plate, which you may want to do, and it may be easier while you're still doing some strapping and stuff to have it uh, not done yet. So I'm not going to do that, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Basically, I'm going to drill these three holes. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the right side. I'm sorry, the left side of the uh, back plate, and I'm going to just go here so I can line them up. I'm going to line this up with the back with the back plate. Going to probably line it up like this. That lines up pretty well. And I'm going to see where those holes are. And this is going to be really just for show. Uh, because again, I'm going to put, I'm going to, I think I'm going to cut this a little more. This looks like I could use a little trimming actually. Let me just see how that lines up. Okay, that lines up pretty well but it's, I want it more like on that line. Okay, so we're going to say right about there. And here I'm just going to mark where the three holes are approximately, and I'm going to just measure that out. And after you do the split rivets, you're going to have to, we're going to have to paint them, and we'll do that as the last step. I sometimes use Sharpie as a temporary solution, and then I go back over it with some actual paint. Let me just make sure these are about 10 millimeters in. And they are. I just did that by eye. This one should be about about there is fine. And this one is 10 and about 10 from the top. So we should be good. So what I'm going to do is drill these holes and then we'll do the split rivets later. And I'll decide whether I'm going to use the straps or the elastic. I, again, prefer to use elastic and do it with snap plates rather than permanently attaching the fabric. Because then these parts are permanently connected at that join right there. Uh, so let me get started doing the drilling. I'll drill those out. Let me get my safety gloves on. And then we'll do the other drill, which is going to be in the, um, the cod piece. We have to drill one hole for a, for a split rivet and two holes in the back for some snaps. Let me get my drill. Hopefully we can hold this stable enough to get that hole. Let me see if I have it. I have it on the fast speed. I'm going to go to the slower speed just so I can get it to catch. And hopefully I won't make a mess of this. I 
just using some light pressure. I don't want to make a mess here of slip. Okay, good. Let me just widen that hole a little bit. scratch not too bad. I'm going to pick off any excess plastic and we do the next one. Let's see the mark. Let's see it right here. Again, I'm doing it slow just because I don't want to scratch it up. Just widening the hole a little bit. And I'll do the last one here. three holes on the side. I'm going to do the three matching holes on the back plate. That will be for our split rivets. Let's see if I can see the mark here. I see it here. Let me see if I can get this down so I can see it. See it right there. Oh. It'll slip there, but I'm okay. Again, I like to use the lower speed so I don't slip. So. It takes a little longer to get a clean hole through this. I'm going to speed it up to go the rest of the way now that i got a pilot hole here. Good clean hole there. And widen it a little bit. So the split rivet will sit flush. Let's find the next hole. I think it's right here. It's kind of hard to see because it's pencil on. Actually, let me do it with the uh, sharpie so I can see it a little better because I'm having a real tr real problem with the shininess seeing it. I'm going to just make a dot right where it's supposed to be with the Sharpie. And that's going to make it a little easier for me to see it. I'm going to try to hold this stable as I get through here. As I go through it, it does shift a little. I don't want to scratch this up here. Hold a little bit. And I'll do 
do the last one. This is always the nerve-wracking part doing these kind of drill jobs. Trying not to scratch anything. Okay, this one's a little off, but I'm within the range here. good and that's going to be for our split rivets I'm just going to check make sure the split rivets fit okay in there we have just enough to do this again these are from Trooper Bay they make really good ones they uh, have the exact right regulation size uh, for the CRL let me just make sure that these fit the holes appropriately I think if they're bent down a little, they will. As I did on the last one, I bend these down a little bit with a plier before I put them in. Just because I like them to fit really snug. I'll just bend that down a teeny bit and make sure it fits in all the holes. Flush. And that one's a little too small. Let's widen this one a little bit. a little tight. And again, this is just prep work so that we're sure when we're ready to go, we'll be able to just quickly assemble everything and have everything ready. Okay, that's sitting flush now. Let me check the last one here. That's not even close. I'm going to have to widen that one a little bit. Still a little tight. Okay, that sits nice now. Okay, let's check the front. And then we're going to do the uh, holes for the rivet in the uh, cod piece. Okay, that one sits flush. That one sits flush, and so does that one. So the front we did perfect. That one's all set. Okay, so I'm just going to keep these aside. These are all my split rivets and washers for that. And we're also going to put one right in the cod piece. And this is kind of uh, subjective exactly where you want, want this to go. Uh, it could be in a couple of areas. I usually like to put it about 20 millimeters from the end. And so let me get my ruler and just make sure I do this as accurately as possible here. So let's say about 20, meter, 20 millimeters from the end would be about here. And let's try to center it across the middle here. So that's about seven. So that would be about, let me see. That's about six, actually, so that would be about three. So right about there, right about at this point, is where I want to put the split rivet that's going to hold the strap that's going to connect uh, that to the back plate. So I'm just going to drill one hole right in there. That's far enough down the curve, too, you're not really going to see it, which is great. See if I want to go a little tighter, maybe a little bit shorter than that. So it's about three, about three. Okay, so let's drill that as well. And make again the mark with the sharpie, just so I can see it a little better. Going blind, trying to see these. Uh, these holes. So I'm making just a little mark there. I'm going to carefully drill this. Okay, let's 
make sure our split rivet again fits. And if it does, we should be in business to move on to the next part. Get a little tight. Bend it a teeny bit and see if it fits. Still a little tight. Let me widen that up a little bit. Okay, and that should sit nice and flush. And again, we're going to paint that black. And I'm not going to set it now because I'm going to wait until I get the fabric, uh, the strap ready that I'm going to put there. So I'm just going to put that aside. And we should have that ready. Now the other part we have to do, which is a little more complicated, let me get this out of the way so we don't damage anything, is we have to drill a hole here and here for the two snaps that are on the side. Uh, there's a snap on both sides that we have to um, account for to hold the belt that goes along the, the middle. So we're going to drill those two holes and that also has to be in a, in a very specific spot. It's about 20 millimeters from this ridge and about 10 millimeters from the bottom. So first let's mark out where the 20 millimeters from the ridge is, which is about here. And then 10 millimeters from the bottom oh, from the bottom would be around here. So we want this spot right here. I'll mark it with my sharpie so I can see it. We're going to want this spot right here to be the spot for the snap. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to measure from the end where two mil 20 millimeters is, right from this ridge. And then we're going to measure how far up from there is 10 millimeters. And wherever that X is, is where we should be drilling. It's approximately here. So where those two lines meet is this dot. So if we look there, there's one right there and there's one right there that we have to drill out. And that's going to be for a snap. A um, snap receptacle that's going to go right here and one right here. So we got to drill that out to make sure that we have a hole there for that. Widening that out a little bit. Okay, that's going to be for one snap, and this is going to be for the other snap. Now, I usually use a snap tool because this is so far into the plastic. I don't think there's any chance the snap tool is going to work, so we're going to have to use the hammer method, which is a little more involved and a little less accurate, but we should be able to do it. make sure I have my snaps here. I'm just going to make sure the snap will fit through. i got to find the proper stud. We're going to have to make that one a little bigger. Let's check the other one. We're going to have to make that a little bigger as well. So let's widen that out a little bit.
inside and from the outside. She might increase the speed. I'm going to do the same on this side. Be careful. If that fits through properly now. Just fits, which is what we want. We want a nice snug fit there. And that's this that's the um, nail part of the snap. And then this part of the snap has to go on top. And then we have to hammer it in. And this is going to be difficult. I'm going to have to use the, the desk here, the table. Because we have to have this laying flat and we use this special tool. We put this behind so that it has a hard surface. And I have to make sure that's perfectly flush with the table here. And that's going to be difficult with this curve, but I'm going to try to get it in place here. Let me see if I can get that down flat. That's going to be very difficult to get down flat. Let me see if I can make it. Maybe with the curve here, maybe right on the end. Let me move that forward. Because that's where we want to strike it. And I think it's going to be just too curved, so I might have to get something to beef this up a little bit. Let me see if I have anything I could use as a base while I, uh, while I pound on it. Let's see if I have any piece of wood or something I could use. Hold on one second. Let me see if I could use that. I really have to get this flush with that circle. And I think now we're in business with this extra inch. Okay, now that's sitting flush right in there. And we have to use this tool. There's a little tool with a head on it. That we're going to bang this down with a hammer straight down and hopefully it'll adhere really well. Let's get my hammer and start banging it. See, that's flattening it out. Let's try it a little more. Not the prettiest, but it looks like it did hold pretty well. Let me check it with a snap and make sure it's working appropriately. Let me just get any snap from my bag here. I got a bag of some scrap snaps. Let's see if that snaps okay. Perfect. So now we got the first snap on, now we'll do the other one on the other side. Let me get the appropriate post and the appropriate backing. And we'll do the same procedure on the other side. This post goes right in here. Stick that through as far as it can go. Get the backing part on it so it's got a nice sturdy surface to work on. This extra inch here that it's given me on my workbench is just enough to get it to that point without bending the curve too much. I want to line that up right into the tool, the back tool. Stick that right in the middle and get my hammer and hammer that away.
That one went really nicely. That one spread out nicely. Okay, let's check it with a snap. Just make sure it snaps nicely. Very nice. Okay, so we got a snap there. Now there's also a mystery snap that I think goes in the corner here. I got to do some research to make sure of that. Um, I remember that from my stormtrooper. Don't be afraid to look up stuff if you're unsure, and I'm never afraid to do that. I'm just going to quickly double check that mystery snap. I think there's one other one that's got to go in the corner. I just want to check the CRL quick and make sure that that is, that is correct. And I think it's the same spacing as the, um, as the rivet on the one side. I'm just going to double check that and see if it's mentioned in the CRL. Yeah, single male snap snap at the top right corner of the ab plate shall be present. It doesn't say exactly. Um, it doesn't say exactly where that should be, uh, but I think it's about the same. I think it's 10 millimeters from the edge and 10 millimeters from the edge. And what I'm talking about is the same snap like I have here. There's one mystery one here, and I'm just trying to see if it's actually a snap. I think it's the back of a snap. Let me just double check. Well, I'm going to have to double check that because from the picture, of course, it's not really detailed enough to see. Let me see if I can see it in the picture. Oh, I can see it in the picture and it's the back of a snap. You can see it here. There's this one you can see the three rivets on this side and the snap that we just made. And then on this side, there is the one male snap just sitting there for no reason in the corner. And that actually does absolutely nothing. And it's on this side in that same position that we put this one, about 10 and 10, right in the corner. So let's just make that mark and put that on, drill that hole and get that snap in while we got all the tools out. So we want to go about 10 millimeters in and about 10 millimeters down. It kind of mimics the uh, snaps on the other side, the uh, rivets on the other side. So there's the single male snap here for no apparent reason. And we're going to do that too to meet the CRL level 2 certification. So we just make the dot there, we'll drill that out, we'll do the snap there. And then we'll get on with some of the uh, strapping pre-steps. Um, just like what we did with the cover strips, I like to do all that pre-work and have all the pieces ready uh, so that it can be very quick when I'm putting everything together. I can do it in one session. So we'll be doing that, and it's going to take some time, and I'll show you the steps in uh, doing that. Okay, let's do this one, one drill here. Let me do it on slow again. Just widening it out a little bit. I could use a bigger drill bit, but I prefer the smaller one. And then getting it right to size. Okay, let's make sure that fits. Get the proper snap. And so this is the back of a snap just sitting here for no apparent reason. It's the same on the Stormtrooper. And it's just a useless thing that was in the uh, actual outfit. Okay, so we got that on. And again, that's just useless. It's just there for decoration because it's what was in the original. And they chose to include that in the CRL. Let me get the right piece for the inside. 
Now this one should be a lot easier. This one I could actually probably do with the snap tool, which I can show you quickly, um, which is a heck of a lot easier than doing this uh, pounding method, because that's problematic. Sometimes it doesn't come out properly. Sometimes it's a little screwed up, and you end up having to redo it. Uh, what I like to use is the heavy-duty snap pliers, which are these pieces. I have these with all the attachments. And let me get the right attachment uh, on here for this. Let me see if I can see which one it is here. Okay, it should be that one and the the triangle. Oh no, the circle. Okay, so let's take this off. This is for a regular snap. This makes it a hell of a lot easier. Just go like this and crimp it. And it's done in one second. And it's very, usually splits it really nicely and makes it look very nice. Yep, perfect. So that's on there, perfect. It split it perfectly. Looks like a star there. That's a perfect split of the snap. And again, it's useless. It's just a useless snap. And we're going to have to paint this black. And again, when we put the rivets in, we're going to paint paint the rivets black. Now, you know, you don't. See, we're not going to see yet what these rivets are. But when I do the um, uh, strapping, you'll understand what I'm talking about with the rivets. I think it'll make more sense. We're going to do the actual strapping. Okay, let's put those aside. We got that hole. Oh, we got to do two holes in the bottom here. I'm sorry. We got two more holes to make. Let me put these away. And these also I might be able to do with the tool, the crimping tool, but probably not because I'm going to have to go in here. Now again, we got to go about 10 millimeters in. And there's two snaps. That are at about 10 and 20. So let's mark off where that's going to land. I'll start right from the edge. And just mark it with a pencil. So this is that's ten, and that's twenty, and that's thirty. And now we're going to go across and see how wide that is. That's five uh, fifty millimeters. So we're going to go two and a half. Draw a line down the center with the pencil. And let's see where we want to put them. We want to put one right about here. We want to put another one a little further down right about here. I'm going to make those two marks with a Sharpie. I'm going to put one here and one here in a line. And then we're going to put the snaps on those as well. And these are the two snaps for the butt plate. So let's get those drilled and get my work gloves back on. It's a pain having to put them on and off and on and off. And you might notice I'll forget them sometimes. Really, for the drilling, it's not that critical. But if I do miss with the drill, I don't want to hit my hand. Let's do these two holes. Same with this hole. Hopefully that's enough for the snaps. Let me just double check. Do the uh, 
the actual snaps in there as well while we got the tools out. Let's see if there's any that we can do without the, um, the hammering process. I have this ridiculous collection of snaps I've collected over the years. Let me see if I can get all the right pieces here. Okay, we got a post, one of those, another one of those. And let's get another post. Let's see if we can get matching ones. There's a post. And there's another post. Okay, we can put the rest of this back. Okay, so let's make sure that fits. Tight fit, but it fits. And let's get this one in there. Let's see if that one fits. Oh, very good. Okay, so we got both of those in there. And we're going to put the snaps on the inside here. Now, I think I might be able to get one of these with the with the crimp tool. Actually, yeah, this one I can get. The other one I cannot. So I'll just do this one. You make sure that the pointy uh, one that splits it is on that side. The other one we're going to have to do with the uh, hammer. Okay. Very good. Let me check the snap. Just with any other strap I have. That's very good. Snap's good. And now we'll put this one on. This one we're going to have to use the tool and the hammer method because it's too far in to, uh, to get that hammer in there, to get the, the, the uh, tool in there. So we lay this down, we get that lined up with the hole, and that kind of keeps it in place. Let me see if I can hold this. While I'm hammering. I'm going to risk it without the uh, gloves for, at the moment. This is going to be tough to hold this, but let me see if I can get that because I want to keep it very straight, straight up and down. It helps it split better. Yeah, that's splitting very nicely. Give it a couple more taps. That looks good, nice and tight. Now it's a little loose, a little loose. I'm gonna have to hit it again. I like to have them really tight so they don't spin around because when they spin around, they can loosen up sometimes. Okay, that's much tighter. Let's try one of the snaps just to make sure it's working okay. Perfect, now let's try two snaps. Just to make sure the two snaps can be side by side here, I should have checked that we had enough room, but I think we're going to have enough room. Yeah, perfect. So we can do two snaps in a line just to snap onto there. And we're going to have to, again, paint this black uh, to kind of hide them so that they're not as visible in the, uh, the final, when we do the final uh, fixing up. Okay, now the other piece we got to do is all the um, snap plates. Now, some people like to use a lot of Velcro. I only use Velcro on the backs of the legs, basically. Everything else, pretty much every other piece of the armor, I use snaps and straps uh, with um, a little stretchy material in between them like this. So I use basically 35 of these throughout the entire armor. Uh, and I'll show you uh, basically on a chart uh, what we have to do to, to accomplish that. Uh, let me get these clamps out of the way because we'll be using these as we go. Uh, but let me give you an example of, of what we're talking about. Uh, if you look here on the diagram for a stormtrooper, hopefully you can see this okay on the video, I'll get out a marker and just kind of show you the ridiculousness of when you want to do snaps, where you're going to put the snaps. Now you're going to have two on the thighs, one here and one here, so that's two. 
you're going to have one here on the arm, one here on the bicep, one here in the middle of the bell, and one here in the top of the bell. So that's one, two, three, four, and it's duplicated on the other side. So you can have one up here, one here, one here, and one about there. Actually more on the inside, but that's okay. So we're going to have eight, so that's two, plus eight. Now we're also going to need four here. We're going to need one in the front, one in the back, one in the front, one in the back. On the shoulder straps, and we'll get into that later as well. I put one on each of there, so that's another four. So that's already 14. I put three on the front, on the chest piece, and there's got to be three associated ones on the bottom on the abdomen, so that's another six. You got to do that exact same six on the back. So keep in mind, I'm just going to make little dots there. You're going to have three on the back as well. So that's another six. So that's a lot of straps and snaps that you're going to need throughout the entire thing. We're also going to need one here, but we don't need a snap plate because we're going to need a strap here right in the cod piece, but we already have the rivet hole. We're going to put a rivet and then a snap, two snaps, but we already have that. We don't need a snap plate, but all these other ones are going to need snap plates. You're going to need a snap plate here, 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 all these different places. Uh, oh, and you're going to need three on the sides here and a three associated there. So that's six and another six on this side on the sides of the uh, abdomen into the back plate. So that's another 12. So let's count this up just for just for fun. That's 24, 28, 36, 38. That's going to be about 38 snap plates we're going to need total. So let me just double check that. 12, 12, that's 36, 37, 38. We're going to need 38 snap plates. Now there's two ways you can do the snap plates. You can either use um, ABS plastic and cut them out and cut out 38 little one inch pieces of plastic and then attach them and then attach them with the uh, straps or you can do them with fabric. Uh, the fabric ones I do prefer because the fabric ones um, adhere a little better with the uh, E6000 glue and they seem to hold up better. Uh, this is an example of what the snap plates look like. Now this is a snap kit you can buy from um, Trooper Bay. And you might look at this and go like, how is this $40 worth of stuff? It's all these snap plates on, you know, uh, junk plastic. Uh, and some straps. How is this, you know, that much money? It's the labor and you'll see because I'm going to do it as a speed up video. For me to make this many snap plates, and this is even enough, I think this is uh, about 20. For me to make this many snap plates and put snaps in each one of them with the tool and drill the holes and everything takes a good two or three hours. So it's how much that two or three hours of time is worth to you and if you how quickly you want to get going. Now I was going to use these snap plates but I'm a little OCD and it bothers me that they're white. And also, I only like to use the ABS backed ones when I'm using the CA glue with the kicker. Uh, that's the glue um, that you can put on and then use the kicker and it dries immediately. The only problem with this glue, and I have it with my Stormtrooper, I use that for my Stormtrooper, and in a couple of spots there were some minor de deformations in the plastic because when this gets hit with the kicker, it heats up to about 150 to 175 degrees and sometimes that's just enough to warp the plastic a little bit and when you're doing the snap plates all over your chest you don't want dimples or, or de deformations in your chest luckily I had it in mind that was minor it wasn't really noticeable I notice it but most people wouldn't even notice it I think on this one I'm going to be play it safe use fabric backed fasteners um, for the uh, male part of the snap and I'm going to use the straps that came with the snap kit, which I think I have. Let me see how many straps I'm going to need. I'm going to need uh, three for the front, three for the back, uh, three for the sides. I don't even have anywhere near enough straps. So I'm going to have to also make uh, a significant number of these straps. Uh, probably, let me try to guess how many snaps, uh, straps I'm going to need. I'm going to need two big ones, two big for the legs. Those are the big 
thicker inch, and I'm going to need the, uh, the two inch uh, material, and these are the one inch. I'm going to need one, two, one, two, three, six. That's six for the arms. I'm going to need the two inch again, so I'm going to need four big. So four big for the straps on the shoulders. I'm going to use the two inch wide type. I'm going to need uh, uh, three and that's six, three and three and six. I'm going to need twelve small for the abdomen. So I'm going to need quite a bit. I'm going to need a total of uh, eighteen small ones and four big ones. So we got one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I'm going to need six more of these to strap up everything I want to strap. Now I could do what I said before. I could use just this material, uh, the non-stretchy um, material, and use the, um, the rivets on the one side and put those there, and that would save me six straps. But again, I like to be able to take apart the front and the back in case I have to make a repair or make a change. Uh, so let me get started with that process. I'll show the first couple, and then I'll go from there and uh, and see how far we can get with that. Let me put these uh, ABS ones away. Again, if you're looking to do it quickly and you, you don't mind or you're careful with the CA glue, definitely get the ABS kit, especially if you're using a white stormtrooper. But for me, I'm going to choose to do it um, a different way with the um, with the fabric snaps. Uh, now basically it's the same procedure, but instead of putting a male snap in an ABS plate, I'm going to be putting a male snap into a piece of fabric. Now basically what I like to do is start just cutting these out. I'm going to get a ruler. I'm going to get my marker, and what I'm going to do is every inch and a half, I'm going to make a mark, and then I'm going to cut it with my, uh, my scissors. So let me just look at the thing here. Okay, so we got an inch and a half. I already marked that piece right there. So about an inch and a half, 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 inch and a half. Let me just go down this one real quick. And I've just found an inch and a half is about the right size to catch enough glue on both sides that it, uh, it works very well and it holds pretty much forever. A lot of people use Velcro and people will say, well, you can do Velcro and you can strap up an armor with Velcro in about, a, in about an hour. That's true, but I'm telling you, the Velcro gets, gets funny after a while, especially if you, you keep the armor in a hot environment. It starts, the glue starts degrading and you start getting some issues. Okay, so that one 24 inch strip, I only got, you know, about uh, 12 or so. Let me get my scissors and just start cutting these. And what I'm gonna do is cut them, and then I'm gonna make a hole in each one of them with a hole puncher. You can use that, um, that tool as a hole puncher, and I'll show you how, to, how I do that. So I try to cut along the grain here so that I get, so I don't have too much fraying. I'm just gonna cut all these out. And again, I'm going to have to do that do that procedure I just did there about four times to get enough of these for every place I'm going to glue them. But hopefully after this video and after I do the sp speed up one at the end of this one when I actually construct these, uh, we'll be able to start actually gluing them on. And uh, then basically after that it's just strapping everything together and doing some finishing work. I still do have to work on the belt. I do have an Anavos belt that I actually prefer to the one that came with the Waltz Trooper Factory kit because the uh, belt boxes are a little bigger. I'll show you the difference of that in the next video. Uh, so I might end up using the um, Anavos belt rather than the one that came with the kit. I'm going to see how it matches. Okay, now I got my tool here. Now what you can do is use the pointy, the pointy tool that comes in here and this open tool this hole and basically actually punch a hole in these. I use this like a hole puncher. 
And for me, it's worked very well. I've been doing that for years, and it really speeds up the process. Let me take that part out, put in the pointy piece, and just go like that. So you find about the middle. This isn't an exact science. I try to find it as best as I can. And you punch like that. And it makes a perfect little hole. You could also do that with a, um, uh, some people use a soldering gun and it makes a little uh, melted hole. This is fine for me. I just use this. Now, keep in mind that these build up in there. You got to poke them out after a while because uh, it does get filled up. So I'm just going to poke out these 12. You get a little hole in the middle. And again, this is an exact science. I'm just kind of finding the middle, very middle part to put the, the hole. And if I miss a couple, I'll have to redo those. Those, those straps. And what we're going to do is then glue these in with E6000 glue into the armor, and these will be the receptacles for those straps. So I'm also going to have to make some straps. So part of this video, at the end of this video, not only will I do uh, these, I'll also get all the straps done, make sure I have at least 24 straps, maybe even 30. I like to make a couple extra to keep in my bag in case one of them gets pulled through. Sometimes uh, the snaps pull out of these, so you want to make sure that you have um, a couple extra in your bag at all times. But again, they're replaceable. If they get messed up, they're replaceable. When you have Velcro, it, it just becomes a mess. You get this glue all over the armor inside. Uh, sometimes when it heats up, they get a little messed up, and it's just not fun. And the only th other thing I do use the Velcro for, which we'll go into also in another video, is after I do all the strapping and the sizing and everything, I also like to put some padding. And I use some padding that's used for um, air conditioners. And I do use Velcro for that so I can position them in the armor. And again, that's a temporary kind of thing. That's something that you can easy easily replace. It's not actually anything load-bearing or anything holding up the armor. It's just to add a little more comfort in certain spots that usually rub up against your body. I usually put two in the knees. I put two in, this, in the... Um, in the uh, knee plates uh, for the shins, and I put some in the forearms uh, to stop from getting bites on my uh, my arm here. Okay, and this is just about filled up with stuff. I see it poking out the back, so I think we're done there. Let me see if I can get a uh, a tool here and just poke this out, and you'll see I'll poke this out. I have a little piece of metal here. Hold on. This is a piece of metal from a um, from one of our um, split rivets. Let me just poke this out. After about 12 of these, you got to poke out all the fabric, and you'll see this is all the little holes it's collected. It's a pain in the neck, but it does make a very nice hole, and it's very quick. It's very quick to do. Let me see if I can poke that out. Get my little hammer. It's this is really in there good. Let's get that fabric out of there. There's so many layers. I should have done this before it got completely stuffed. But you'll see it's I'm pulling out all the little pieces I just took the whole made made the hole punches for. So keep this clear. As you're going, I might even do it after every six or so, so it doesn't get this jammed in there. Okay, let me get the rest of that out. I still got a couple more in there. I think I went a little too crazy, did a little too, a few too many. there. I'll get the rest of those out of there. Let me see if I have a nail as well. I could probably get it with a nail.
there we go okay you can see that stack of little holes okay so just keep that clear don't do what I just did don't do 12 of them wait a little bit in between okay so now I do have two of these pliers which I like to have because that way I can keep working uh, with one and keep the uh, attachments on the other so this one I'm going to use and this one's this one's full of junk too probably from the last time I did this let me clear this one out quick this one has a couple of things still in there Okay, good, we got that all out of there. Okay, now we gotta use the right attachment, which is this one. And I'm gonna use the flat attachment for the back. Okay, now we're gonna start putting the snaps on. Now I'm gonna get bunch of the snaps out of here. I'm going to take a bunch from my collection here. Now we need all these male snaps and the back, the associated backs for them. I'm hoping I have enough. I should have more than 30. I have, I think the last bundle I bought was about 100 of these. So I should have more than enough to cover it. Let me lay these out, and then we can get started pounding them in. Just got to fish out the associated pieces. These are just tons and tons I've collected over the years of these uh, snaps. They're all the same gauge and same size. There's a couple of variations, so I try to keep to the same ones uh, for whatever project I'm doing. I did have that problem once before. I found that there were slight differences in some of the snaps I had and it caused some issues. So I try to keep to like snaps uh, whenever I can. So that when I do replacements, I'm sure that the replacements are going to fit properly. Okay, so we can get the rest of them later. Let me stick these back in here. Hopefully I won't need any more. This should be enough for, uh, for right now. Okay, so I take each of these. I stick the uh, nail side through there. Make sure it pokes through the fabric all the way so that it's clear. Trying on that one wasn't very good. Okay, there we go. Poke it through nice and clear. Put the other piece on and then just crimp it. And I use a lot of force to crimp it, make sure it gets a nice star pattern like that so it spreads out. I sometimes again take a snap and just check it, make sure it snaps nicely and pulls right off. See, it's got a good hold. I'll try it with the snaps I'm intending to use just to make sure. Perfect. Very good. It's got a good pull. And what we're going to do is glue these all around inside the armor and we'll get to that later. So let me get started on this. Um, I'll do a few more for you and then I'll do the rest as a speed up video and then I'll make some of these straps. And the straps are the same same thing. You, you figure out the size. I'm going to use pretty much uh, two to three inches for all of these. I think these are three inches. Let me double check. These are three inches. Yes, from uh, the point, the middle point to there. And you use that as a guide when you're putting these snap plates in the actual armor. Use that as a guide so that that's the distance you need to put the um, these snap plates. Okay, that looks very good. Let me check it. And again, this is going to be about two hours worth of work. 
just going through this and doing these meticulously one after another. But once I got that done and I got the straps done, I'll be ready to tackle just putting them in. And I basically glue all of them in one shot um, and then leave them to dry for a couple days and then I'm ready to go. Now again, the, the difference in the size, this is the size we use for the small straps, uh, which is the one inch. Or the, this, these are actually a little thinner, but I like to use the one inch ones, especially for the straps on the arms. And this is the larger straps uh, that we're most likely going to use for the shoulders and for the legs, because uh, you need something a little more uh, beefy uh, to hold the legs. Uh, so we'll get to that when we get to, um, to that, that session. Well, anyway, thanks everybody for joining me today. I'll continue on with this, do a speed up video of doing the rest of the snap plates, uh, try to get 36 of them done and a bunch of the straps. And then next time I think we'll tackle um, actually doing the uh, strapping, actually doing the gluing into the straps, uh, stra snap plates, uh, so that we'll be ready to just start the assembly and the fitting process and doing some of the finalizations. Then we're going to also do the finalization of the helmet and then the little painting jobs that have to be done everywhere to hide some of those rivets and uh, snaps that are supposed to be hidden. Well, thanks everybody, and I'll see you later.